We just had an absolute blast with our combined hunting and fishing expedition earlier this week, and not only that, we were rather successful in getting a gold albino mule deer buck and a gold brook trout over on Golden Ridge Reserve. So today, we're coming back with the same premise, hunting here on Riven to the Coast, and later, going fishing on the Norway map in Call of the Angler. And much like in the case of that last video, we're going with a very light loadout. We only have the 12 gauge shotgun and the 243. So if you missed the last video, the whole idea being if we've got our fictional truck loaded down with a whole bunch of fishing gear, we're probably not carrying four guns in the process as well. So just a shotgun and the 243 should allow us to hunt everything on the map. And the 243 does offer us a little bit of range for all the smaller game here, but nice little bicolor rock ptarmigan to get us started was a 66 meter shot, hit it with one bell in the wing, but enough to bring it down. And I think this is at least where we're going to start this hunt. We'll kind of move up through the northern part of the map and just see what we can find up here. Got a couple of decent looking black grouse here. And I gotta say too, these ponds up here, like way up in the mountains, are very similar to some of the areas we can fish over on the Norway map. So I think this is gonna work out really well. And for those that maybe don't know, this map, Revan to the Coast, is based in Finland. Norway, Finland, we can call this a Scandinavia hunt and fishing trip. Can't be exactly the same. However, I think it's gonna be close enough. So, got this guy at 112. Did we get the other one? I thought we did. I guess not, because there's his tracks. He was the lower estimate one, so no big deal. We'll just kind of keep on moving through here and kind of avoid adding too much hunting pressure. Now, one other thing that should be interesting for the duration of this hunt is whether or not we can remember to change the ammo every time that becomes necessary. For whitetail, brown bear, moose, we're going to be using 12 gauge slugs. And of course, that means we need to change from the bird shot to the slugs. So I want to make sure this shot's going to clear the ground there. That's going to work just fine to drop that guy. And we could use the 243 on longer shots, we probably will. But I think definitely for the most part, we want to try to use the slugs when we get these big game opportunities. For raccoon dogs, lynx, obviously the 243 there is going to work perfect. But these situations, I think the slugs are going to be best when we can get close. So a 193 silver, just missed gold by about 0.8 there, but left long against the drop at 70 meters. Not a bad deal, of course, whitetail are drinking now. And I think we'll maybe scoot over to this lake. I'm hoping to encounter more birds on the way over. Black grouse, hazel grouse, caper kaylee, things like that. We actually haven't seen too many of them. Now that's looking a little better. God, I switched the ammo, but we never reloaded the gun. I just thought of that. I don't think we're going to get a shot of that. I mean, that is 100 plus meters away. Okay. Good estimate, 4 to 5. I don't know if Caper Kaylee can troll or not. And they can be a pain to track. Typically what happens, you just kind of hang with them, follow them through the mountains, and hope that eventually they flush back your way and fly over you. Let's take the scope off of this for now, and hopefully that's what happens. Or, I guess the other option is, it just goes aggressive. So, maybe we'll try to catch it like mid-attack. That's one thing that do keep this a little interesting, because shooting an aggressive Caper Kaylee with a shotgun is not exactly difficult. So, see if he'll actually attack us or just flee and give us that opportunity. That'll work a little bit better. So, talk about wanting to encounter more birds up here. Right on cue shows a level 3 Caper Kaylee. High bleed rate from that shot brought him down good and quickly, and a 4.81 diamond. That I didn't expect. That is our biggest caper, Kaylee, our first ever to break 4.8 and a tracking distance of 1.00 kilometers on the dot. Not too bad. Pretty cool to actually see that. They go all the way to five. So definitely a lot of room to improve, but for as many time and caper Kaylee as we've shot between the moose grind going over on Medved Taiga, all the time spent here for the Revan Tulico's single player only diamond challenge, we killed dozens of diamond caper Kaylee. Never cracked 4.8, finally, here in multiplayer today, we've done it. That's a kind of interesting looking buck. It's the regular sort of 210, 220 rack. But I think it's a little sort of taller than normal. Might be a good opportunity for the 243 handgun. That's about 200 meters out there. Bit much for a slug, but with the insane power and range of this thing, that should do just fine to bring him down. Gonna take a little time to start to drop, but we see 50 to 75 and that should do it. So 
What I think we'll do, especially because of the time of Caper Kaylee, is probably jump down south, try to give ourselves a chance at, I'd love to get a brown bear, moose are down there, we're just getting close to moose drink time, and then maybe some raccoon dog and lynx. Obviously, lynx were up north as well, but I do tend to find they just sort of run past you a little bit more in between all these little lakes in the south. I will be curious though, if this kind of has a different score than normal, like the, the way those beams wrap around and stuff, it just looks a little bit unique. Ends up being a 210 score, which I do think is a tad lower. A lot of times you get 212, 213, 214 with this rack. Kind of interesting to see a little bit of a different variant, but the 243 punched well through that lung at 200 meters. And let's go ahead and do that. Let's jump down. I want to stay away from anybody else that's down there. Maybe if we go like here, we can kind of stay out of the way. You know, it sure is reminiscent of what we spent so many hours here on Revan Dulico's doing, trying to get a diamond raccoon dog. But I do enjoy hunting down here. There's a lot of stuff going on constantly. And even though this is a very speedy, level five <laughs> raccoon dog that we just can't get a shot at still decent at that six to eight kilo range maybe he'll just stop putting on the jetpack for a minute and actually let us get a shot gonna be tough at that angle i mean the 243 can sometimes like get the liver maybe he's going down decently fast looks like it is intestine blood though either way good to get the super speed one down no sign of any brown bear down here just yet, but plenty of room to roam around here. Ended up not even close really to punching through that time. Had quite a ways to get the liver, but at least got that one. And we'll just keep on moving through down here in the south. So finally, we have a potential crack at a brown bear here. It's actually a good spot because he's trying to cross over there to that other side. And so long as we don't run into too deep of water, I think we can get ourselves in shotgun range. Now shotgun slugs have pretty significant drop, so as we're alerting him at 120, we have to aim pretty high, see if he'll actually stand up again, and the more he faces us, the better this probably is. Hopefully it's going to dip right into a lung, we'll see what actually happens, looks like actually even better than I thought, and I did hear a bird of some kind laying in the water just beside us, it must have taken off again, but maybe we can swap the bird shot just in case. Luckily, no Caper Kaylee situations this time, however, we do have some ptarmigan. Might actually get a chance at this one. Just a level 2 female, but gonna be able to get that one. And I thought I'd see- oh, that's interesting. Got a couple of geese here. Probably should slow down. I don't know if the host of this particular server is still here, but don't want to get too crazy with pressure. And let's actually see. Shot a level 3 male and a level 2 male. I mean, not a bad deal. Couple of male Canada geese. I'm gonna try to keep that spotted as long as we can, just so we kind of know where it drops. Our brown bear is just here behind us, and I think that's probably going to be it for our hunting portion of this particular expedition. So our brown bear, 120.49 meters, oh, right through the top of the lungs. Maybe the drop wasn't as significant as I thought. Was a cinnamon fur type got the gold at 23.88? Actually, just barely got the gold. Pretty good deal, so hopefully we can recover those geese real fast. And let's not forget the ptarmigan that we dropped, another bicolor, this time a willow ptarmigan. But then we got one down here, this should be the level three, which is a silver hiding back there behind the chat logs. And finally, our level two can of the goose. So a couple of silvers to get some bonus skills there. And I'm actually quite excited to jump over to Norway and see what we can catch, so we'll go and switch the guns for some fishing rods, and head out. Now, one of the things I definitely want to do here on Norway is fishing areas kind of similar to what we just hunted back on Ribbon to the Coast. So small bodies of water like this are perfect for kind of a replication of those small mountain ponds that we hunted up in the northern part of the map. So looking for Arctic char and stuff like that in this particular one, but we're gonna try to go for a few more species because we've really only fished for Arctic char and brown trout for a couple of videos in a row. That is a really good sign though. First cast, bite on a size two spoon, gotta be a brown trout. Almost has to be. Just the way that that unfolded and the amount of tension we're getting, that must be the case because at 30% drag, we were having no issues. But frankly, I just didn't expect to catch a fish on that cast. That is most certainly a brown trout, not a bad one. 
was the splash i think that splashdown just kind of moved around audio wise it sounded like a massive fish jumped to the right at first but we will take that and we'll probably try a few more casts in here i really didn't think we'd get a hit that quickly there we go got another fish biting out of this lake little more tension still i think it'll be a brown trout we can see that as we kind of bring them in here might be a little better than the last one as always they look enormous in the water kind of a rare opportunity the way that we are sitting to actually see it under the water got that weird reflection thing too just up against the edge of the pond but just about a 12 pounder and maybe that's a sign we should go ahead and move on because we're not catching any monster brown trout and no luck with the arctic char so i think we're gonna scoot down to here and i want to say like as we go along here arctic char are going to be a common fish we encounter so should have plenty of chances for a good one you know i always see these guys swimming around here i believe these are eyed and they always look huge they actually don't get that heavy but i can't help but at least try to catch one when they're swimming around mocking us trying to catch these arctic char so let's just kind of see what this is this is not a size seven hook so not necessarily anything special four pounder might actually even at that be our best one and good to know that we can fairly quickly bring one of those in there was an okay looking arctic char that wasn't hitting on our lure so most likely a silver but we'll take a, a little silver eyed instead as we just kind of keep on moving along and trying to fish every inch of this water that sure looked like a char big enough to hit on a size two spoon I'm gonna bring this by and if he doesn't hit that i kind of think we're gonna swap to a size three just to try to bring that out of there because that looked good to me we need our silver one here and i think with a slow retrieval we can probably just flip cast this out surely he'll come and hit that oh, and hit that he will he came flying in for that and you know the tension on that while in the gray instead of the red still is pretty high again we kind of get this cool effect minus the fact that he's flipping around like we had earlier we get to see him under the water like the brown trout and if we can just get him lifted up out of there sure feels like a good sized fish going to be a 12 pounder kind of interesting the way we're standing halfway in the water here he looked maybe it was because we're down so low but he looked really big when he actually surfaced there so back to the size two spoon we go now i did say earlier on in the video that i wanted to focus on some things other than just arctic char and i think this is a good lake to give a shot there's a bunch of different species in here including xander which i do want to try to focus on but they are a nocturnal fish so i think we won't quite see any of them yet but if we throw a minnow out here on our flow fishing rig we ought to be able to land something and we'll just kind of see how it goes okay something took that without really messing with it and taking line now we saw there are pike in here this is a really small hook and that's something we could definitely play with is going with a heavier setup but based on all the different fish species in here i think it may be kind of important to go with a smaller hook size but even still kind of an interesting fight from this one this is 50 feet deep by the way so one thing i don't think it is is a catfish that would be another nocturnal species but the good thing is we are kind of getting into the evening so what is that is that an asp kind of what it looks like it is just a four and a half pound bronze but the tension it was able to put on that line was kind of surprising so let's stick with this setup for now and if we're just catching bronzes maybe go up a hook size or two but there's so much in here that i kind of think we gotta go with that smaller setup and maybe hope for a lucky cast in terms of location if we want to catch a really big one it gets me every time it always i don't know why but it catches me off guard so bad when we're using a float fishing rig and they just immediately take it like that this has to be a pike probably not a huge pike i'm almost tempted though just in case maybe to swap our float fishing rig to the heavier rod because at 95 percent drag i'm not sure we're gonna do much with this one not just pull a line out we'll be able to tire him out fairly quickly but maybe not something we want to spend a lot of time doing yeah he is kind of going the other way and essentially what we don't want is this guy 
still running around 25 feet is these long extended fights on what I'm guessing is maybe like a silver or bronze pike. I can't see this being anything else. And should there be, you know, a gold or diamond of something else in here, when we're doing this, we have no chance of landing those types of fish. Is that a pike? That is not a pike. That's an asp. Hold on a minute. Now, I know we just saw pretty impressive fighting out of the last one. Not too bad. Almost a 10 pounder. I guess that's our personal best by 0 0.01 pounds. I like the look of them. Now they get pretty big. Maybe that is an option. Maybe we go to like a size one hook and a bigger rod. Let's try that. Getting something already. Now there's two options here. This is either a way better sized fish for an asp and that tension is interesting. Or it's like an okay pike. When you get that kind of thing, where it's like that grayer tension, it makes me think it's a small pike, but I don't know. I just want to know what this is. That is an asp again. I think a pretty good chance it's going to be a gold, if not a guarantee, based on our hook size. I mean, we'll take that any day. Oh, that's an Atlantic salmon. Those are in here? That could kind of cause us problems. 17 pounder explains a lot there. I did not consider that. So that was literally our last minnow. We'll go and get more. And we're getting really close to evening. We might see Xander biting soon. Got another fish though on this size one. Probably going to be another salmon, but there's no guarantee in that. We have 50 minnows now though, so... Whether we catch a ton of salmon or start pulling Xander and more asp out of here, we should be in good shape. That is actually a pike. Now, on a size one hook, we should be looking at at least a silver. I don't think it's nearly guaranteed to be gold. They, again, they just get so big on this map. We could just get him out of there. Still going to be a solid fish. 14 pounds silver. And that definitely complicates things that there's some much bigger size fish in here or fish that can get much bigger than what we're actually after. Either way, getting towards evening, if we can just catch one Xander, especially on this setup, I'll be more than pleased. Looking like another pike hitting this. Pretty good tension on that as well. I don't know if we're going to be able to just kind of haul it straight in, but maybe a potential 20 plus powder as we keep on targeting, frankly, fish that are considerably smaller than that, but not complaining when we get them. I mean, this is the first time I've been legitimately concerned about the tension. I don't think we're quite going to reach that point where it's actually a problem, but it does get pretty high, right around like three quarters there, when we really try to pump him up to the surface and if he's trying to take line, but nice looking fish for sure. That's going to work to get him out of the water. That does look nice. 22 pounds. Still a silver. Technically our biggest pike between the two maps, and no surprise, as that would be well above diamond over on Golden Ridge Reserve. Makes me think, you know, should we actually go with a slightly bigger setup here? It kind of cuts off some of the fish that we actually are kind of targeting. But we're getting a lot of nice pike out of here. You know, I wanted to catch just one Xander. So we've made our setup considerably lighter. And that looks to me like a pretty big pike. I could be mistaken. The zoom on this obviously is going to make it look bigger, but sure doesn't look like a bad fish. We'll see what happens when he takes this. The line is still the same, but the hook size is considerably smaller. I'm pretty sure that's got to be an okay one, though. Let's kind of pay attention to... The tension, not nearly as high as what we saw before. So I guess that's most likely going to be a smaller one. This is a hook size like six or seven. So not big by any stretch, but as he was kind of swimming in there, definitely did not look to be a bad fish. I'm gonna try to bring this all the way in. It is getting to that point where we should be able to see Xander from the surface. I thought I just saw one, but this guy 
Wait a minute, that is a Xander. That makes more sense. Those dorsal fins really look like that of a pike. That's a 12 pounder. Not too shabby. Well, literally, just in the interest of catching one, we went with that setup and then didn't even realize we were hooked into one. And it looks like we got another one to come up out of there. So in all likelihood, this will be our last fish of the expedition, but I like what we got going here. And this is definitely something we need to focus on a little bit more along with brown trout and arctic char here on Norway. So make sure we don't jump the gun and try to set this hook a little bit too early. Because again, diesel looking fish. Gotta make sure he's actually going to get this. No messing around. Actually pretty good looking tension again. Not too bad. So this spot and this particular species of fish is another one we're definitely going to come back to in the future. Next time we end up in a nighttime Norway server, we're going to go after these guys a good bit. That is a nice looking one. Better than the last one, maybe? 13 pounds? I mean, it is. We will take that. And hopefully that's a good kind of launch point for the next time that we go here to Norway. So we actually did not place our Diamond Caper Kaylee in the lodge. And given that it is our biggest one, I think we should go and do that. And that is insane to see. We're actually upgrading from a 4.7 that we shot last August more than a year ago. And the insane part is simply the fact that it has been over a year. 4.82 for this guy. And just kind of like we did yesterday, I'd like to step back and just imagine what it could be like having fish in the trophy lodge. I know it's probably never going to happen, but I can't not just picture how cool that could be. And I want to bring it up one last time as we're doing this kind of series fishing and hunting in these same videos. And I think we're going to keep it up if for no other reason than the fact that we've had two main lodge additions, a 4.8 Western Caper Kaylee and a albino mule deer buck that scored, I think, 240 something in like a combined two and a half hours of hunting. Not too bad. We've had full hunts longer than that. No diamonds, no rares, no nothing. A really cool rare and our best diamond of a particular species. And then we get to go have fun and catch a bunch of fish. So pretty good deal and looking forward to more of those in the future but anyway that's gonna do it for this video so as always thank you guys for watching and i'll see you next time